Good morning. We are still on our national park adventure and we are in line right now to visit the Great Sand Dunes National Park in Southern Colorado and looking forward to this park. Uh, it's very different, much different terrain than what we've been experiencing. Of course, every park has its own beauty, but there is a line to get in because it is Labor Day weekend, so the parks get crowded. Uh, we did have an interesting experience last night. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so we were leaving yeah. Black Canyon Gunnison National Park <laughs> in Colorado, and we were heading to this one, and we just thought we would grab a hotel, but uh, Tanya was searching and searching and searching. There were no hotels to be found because they were having a, a rodeo. Some type of rodeo in one of the towns nearby. What was the name of the town? Gunnison. Oh yeah, in Gunnison. They had a rodeo, so there were no hotels available at all. And so we were just uh, on the road and we saw a national forest campground. I think it was called Buffalo Pass. Pass. Mm -hmm. And we pulled in there and uh, they had some campsites available and it was right before dark and we set up the tent really quick and uh, It ended up to be a really nice campground. We had a great evening uh, We slept really well. We weren't uh, We weren't we were level. We weren't unlevel like at other places we've been to <laughs> And it was only five bucks. And, I mean you can't beat that so you know, it is. it takes a lot of work to put up a tent, but it's well worth it. You know, David and I have done a lot of camping at different locations, and we uh, we can tell you that this one was really, really nice. We enjoyed it, and it was a, you know, spur of the moment surprise, and usually those seem to be the most fun. So we had a great experience, but we hope you enjoy uh, Great Sand Dunes National Park. We probably aren't gonna be doing any hikes uh, at this park, but we'll definitely show you around and show you some beautiful scenery. And if you have any questions about the park, put them below. Maybe we can answer them. If you plan on coming to Great Sand Dunes, I hope you enjoy this video. Peace. So you got your sand dune, and when the wind blows, the sand, it pushes the sand up and then as it falls over the backside it breaks and then deposits on the backside so the top or the peak is always shifting that's awesome as the wind blows so they're always changing when the wind changes directions uh it, it affects the shape of the dunes that's awesome long way just to get there.
You don't want to do something? Like what? Tell a joke? Tell a joke. What did the Indian say when his dog fell off the cliff? What? Dog gone. <laughs> but I'm bump. <laughs> here is anchored pretty good so I think that the sand right here is not very deep and the roots are actually grabbing into some soil yeah because if they were in the sand it'd probably pull right out yeah grass growing at the sand dunes you did it babe This is exhausting, but it's so pretty. Look, look how pretty. It's amazing. We did see some dogs out here, which is really sad because the sand gets up to 140 degrees. So they're poor little feet, but hopefully they're okay. So this is how much sand has come out of our shoes. Doing some more off-roading at the Great Sand Dunes. National Park. <laughs> yes. Southern Colorado. Southern Colorado. And the scenery is beautiful. We just passed uh, what they call the sand pit. And it's basically a hole in the ground that has sand in it because everything here has sand. Um, there are some beautiful mountains. Thank you. Thank you, babe. We're going to try out the four-wheel drive of this. Ready? Walking in the sand dunes was pretty tough. Yeah, and uh, hot, too. Very hot. And... We did see a dog with shoes. That was cute. We saw people with shoes too. <laughs> so you have the Crystal Mountains that blows storm winds, which creates the dunes. Uh, these are the Crystal Mountains.
we decided to stop for dinner at the Great Sand Dunes National Park. Um, we bought our camping food that we haven't even had a chance to eat yet. So we're gonna have a pad thai with chicken. And beef stew. And beef stew. And for an appetizer or dessert, we're gonna have uh, dried mangoes. So we're looking forward to our uh, camping food. It's really good. It's tasty, believe it or not. And we've had these before. We highly recommend them. And we're boiling our water. Ready. Yeah. Which one do you want to start? Open it up. Which one? Uh, we're we're starting with the chicken because that's what I did the measurement for. You got to get the little pack out, the uh, oxygen pack out. Yeah. Don't tear past the ziplock. Yeah. got a uh, 12 pack of uh, Colorado native beers. I think there was uh, six different ones and they're all really good. If I ever see these back in Texas, I'll buy them. I always forget. like to sample the dried meat. Ah. <laughs> kind of powdery. <laughs> oh, when I was younger, I used to do a lot of backpacking with my buddies, and we would always eat these meals. And uh, they, they're actually not too bad. Uh, it's a lot easier than carrying a bunch of stuff. You know, all you need is some water. And, you can actually eat them right out of the bag uh, when you're backpacking and you don't have to wash pots and pans and use more water. Uh, but uh, there's two major brands. Uh, I think one was High Sierra and the other was Mountain House. And uh, they're really good. I, uh, there was one called Sierra Chicken that I really used to like. I don't see it anymore. That was one of my favorites. And one yeah. pack serves about two people. So, yeah. so we like to we like to cook two of them and split them. But we always have leftovers too. But they are better quality than you think. So we just drove uh, I don't know several miles on this sand trail. It's solid sand, and you can kind of see it behind my truck there, and it twists and turns uh, through uh, kind of uh, the sand dunes, and then uh, after you leave the park, then it turns into National Forest, and at that point, we did a couple creek crossings, mm -hmm. and it got really tight with the trees and the brush. Mm -hmm. uh, it's where they were just pretty much scraping down the side of the truck, so... We were going to try to keep on going out to the highway, uh, but we decided to turn around and just come back the way we came because uh, it just really wasn't worth it to me to scratch the truck up. I'm sure I probably have a few scratches on there. It takes you into the mountains, but... Yeah, it, it gets down into a canyon and, and the trees uh, become much tighter. Yeah, it got it's sketchy. Probably more for Jeeps 
and smaller vehicles. Freeze-dried celery. Freeze-dried celery. What do you think the meat is? Hmm? What do you think the meat is? It's meat. It's freeze-dried freeze -dried meat. Wow. That's amazing. Did you stir yours? Let me start. It's been great so far. We made it up to the top of Imogene Pass, and uh, with just the stock tires, and uh, it's been great to drive. Very comfortable. And uh, it's been through a beating, though. Yeah. <laughs> and we did, uh, you know, some some sandy trails too, which it did fine on. Uh -huh. uh, we went when we were in uh, where were we? Arizona. We went to uh, the slot, yeah, slot canyon. canyon, and it was a deep sand road. Red Canyon. We had to let we had to let the air out of the tires. It made a big difference. You'll see that video. Look uh, for that video. Well, that was fun. That was fun. A lot of fun. So where are we heading? Uh, we are headed to uh, White, Great, uh, White Sands New National Park in New Mexico. And that is, uh, we don't even know how far. It's six hours from here. Six hours? Yeah. Might six. have to try to get a hotel. Yeah. I think in New, um, maybe Albuquerque, we'll get a hotel in Albuquerque. Or we could hit another... Uh, uh, <laughs> National Forest <laughs> Campground, which worked out great last night. It would be nice to take a shower. Yeah. Downhill picnic table. Had tie. Yeah, we're on a downhill. <laughs> it's throwing my back out. <laughs> mm. Good. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we're going to serve the beef stew, and we're going to split it. This little stove is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's a nice stove. We love that stove. It's very convenient. We have a larger one that we haven't even used yet because uh -huh. uh, it's a, tool, uh, a two burner Coleman, but mm -hmm. when you're just boiling water, this works good. So the final decision on which one we like better, Pad Thai with chicken or beef stew? This is the beef stew. Lots of peas and carrots. A lot of peas and carrots. Potatoes. Mm. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Probably could use some pepper. I think I like the pad thai better. What about you? Yeah. So I, I think if you uh, doctor this up with something, mm -hmm. yeah, it would be good. But. Mm -hmm. 
but without having to doctor anything up if you're, you know, backpacking or out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, the Pad Thai with Chicken wins today. Bon Appetit. Bon Appetit.